At the moment, there is uh, no wind and no turbulence in the scene, so let's go ragdoll um, fields and let's start with some air just to get it to blow sort of sideways. You can already see some some lines being drawn on the hair on these uh, on the capsules. So if I hit play now, we should already see a tiny bit of motion, uh, but not not a lot. So let's just increase increase the amount maybe to ten. So you see, there's a little bit of wind, maybe a hundred. So then there's a, there's a lot more. So that's that you know it's probably too much. But let's start there, and let's also add some turbulence. So uh, all of the fields that you add will uh, interact with each other. So now we have wind and we have turbulence. And you can see as I move the turbulence field around, we get sort of a slightly different different effect. And we can change the um, frequency to make the to make the to make more or less turbulence. Uh, obviously if the frequency is very low, you get these sort of low frequency uh, waves. Uh, and the higher you go the the higher high frequency you get. So I would say that's uh, the, that's the frequency is fine, but now the uh, the amount is too low. Let's see if we can increase it to 50. That's a lot. So now we can balance this out. If we decrease the uh, the wind, so like now we have a little bit of wind. You can sort of see how the wind is is getting the hair to move side to side. I can sort of choose which direction to have my turbulence affect the hair in. I like get turbulence is a bit strong now, probably maybe 10, maybe 20. Okay, and there that we're, we're getting somewhere. You sort of see how the turbulence is uh, kind of starting to look like wind. That's probably a bit too strong. Maybe the wind is too strong as well. Something like that. And uh, normally, I mean, the, normally if, you, if you're dealing with wind, you don't have this sort of constant field. You sort of have the wind, the wind moves. So I'm gonna animate the turbulence as well. I'm just gonna put a keyframe right here. And maybe a keyframe over there, and then we can just uh, interpolate that and like, give it some, give it, have it go in, into infinity, so it just keeps going in that way. And maybe that's a bit strong. And that's a bit fast. Oh, there we go. So something like that looks fine. I think we can hide the geometry at this point. And just look at the capsules. Uh, that's not bad. Uh, I'm spotting some self intersections with the hair as well. Uh, I think we can avoid that if I were to, like you see this one for example, here they're going through each other. Uh, and that's because they're all part of the same group and by default the group has no self-collisions enabled. Uh, but as I enable this, I, I also see that some of them intersect as well. That that shouldn't, so I think if I hit play now, these guys will uh, will struggle a bit. And you can see how now we get lots of collisions. We might need to uh, we might just need to give these guys their own collision group. So I'm going to go edit uh, collision group. So now these guys, uh, these capsules here, they're not going to intersect. Or they're not going to collide with each other. They're being uh, excluded from the collision from the from the contact generation. I'll do the same thing for you and you and you. You can be a collision group as well. And I think that should do it. So now we have, they'll be allowed to intersect because the, the hair clumps that we're dealing with, uh, you know, they're quite close to each other. And the, the capsules are not doing a very good job of, of capturing these particular shapes. Uh, so I'll, you know, we can tweak the shape, we can tweak the sizes and assign the meshes and things like that. But in this case, I'm just gonna, just gonna let it slide. Um, all right, there we go. So I think that should do it. Maybe everything is a bit heavy. Let's just, just reduce it a bit to 30, something like that. Okay, let's uh, let's give this a try. So that if I record this. All right, so now let's hide the solver and have a look. Okay, there we go. So now we got our character relaxing in the wind. <laughs> it's funny, as I was running the simulation, I noticed that the frame rate 
it's just surprisingly low. Like I'm like, what what is it in this scene that makes the simulation so much slower than normal? And, uh, and then I realized that our glasses are, are actually deforming every frame. So this can happen if your geometry is skinned, for example. In this case, we haven't skinned our glasses to the character. They are actually, uh, it seems like they're parent constrained to the joint. And then we've combined the mesh. So there's a poly unite now driving the final thing. Uh, but you get the same effect if you skin it. Every frame, the geometry will change in some way. And whenever the geometry changes, Rydal will update this collision mesh that it generates for it. And uh, that update process can be uh, quite slow. It's only meant to happen once. So you can either uh, solve it by just wiping the history of the thing, uh, but that might not always be an option because if it's skinned, you probably want it to re remain skinned. So another option is to duplicate the mesh and use that duplicate as a collision mesh for Ragdoll. And the third option, probably the most uh, straightforward option, is to, uh, in the options for replace mesh, you can choose not to maintain history. Actually, maintaining history is, is not on by default, so normally this would not be an issue for you. But if you do maintain history, uh, uh, just keep an eye out for maintaining history for meshes that change every frame. And maybe the last thing we'll do then is to, um, uh, let's reintroduce the fields, turbulence and wind. And um, maybe we'll animate this again. There we go. So let's say that uh, this is our starting point. And let's say that we wanted to make it a bit stiffer, say 0.5, uh, just to demonstrate what the, the damping uh, value does as well. So if damping is really, really low, uh, we get a lot more jiggly hair. Uh, normally, for a film or for a game, or just generally where you want hair to not be the main, the main thing that people look at, like obviously in this case, you, you might have like lip sync or something, you would like a, like a character talking, so you don't really want the hair to to, to take attention away from, um, from reading the lips. In which case, you might want damping to be quite high to sort of make it a lot more subtle. So it'll still be responding to the wind and forces, but it's like it's, it's, like it's hitting the air brakes. Uh, it's, it's, got, it's got, you know, it's like, like the brakes are continuously on. Uh, you can take this even further by increasing like the air density as well. So if this is, uh, if it's zero, you're essentially having the hair in space. There is uh, nothing in the world that, that keeps the hair from moving, no air. Uh, and if it's very high, it's essentially in um, water or in mud. So you can see that now it's just moving less on a global level. And if it's even higher, say, you know, 100, uh, it's like it's in sand or something like it's very reluctant to move so you see that even though the turbulence is like trying to to pull it around it's uh, not strong enough to actually cause it to move around and but this is also a global force you see that as she moves her head if i hide the polygons as the head moves they are still trying to stay where they are in world space so this this would be impractical for example if you had a character walking around and doing stuff because the hair was trying to stay at the world space uh, location. So the alternative to that is to not have too much air density, maybe no air density, and then rely uh, entirely on the damping parameter. So if this uh, damping is very high, you get a similar effect, but it's local to the uh, to the parent. All right, uh, let's leave damping at one, and uh, let's record this back down so we can see what we're dealing with. And again, 60 FPS, that's good. And uh, I was going to bake that down to keyframes. It's even faster, and we can hide the solver and show the mesh, get some lights in here. There we go, and we're back at, you know, real-time performance uh, with some nice hair blowing in the wind.